my name is Antoinette Bay. I am with the Paper Papillion. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Limburg, New York, which is uh, on the south shore of Long Island. And I am here today with my very first YouTube video. And I've decided to create a card and a box, gift box, for you today um, on my very first YouTube. I want to get started. Okay. So we're using Happiest of Birthdays, Bloom and Grow. Stamparatus is going to allow me to stamp and re-stamp in different colors. So I'm taking a piece of cardstock, Whisper White Thick Cardstock, and then I'm going to place my stamp where I want it. And this is going to get cut out with a die, so it's not that important that it's centered or anything like that at the moment, but this is where we'll place it for now. Then just lightly, gently push down on the stamp, and then we're going to ink up this stamp with uh, Daffodil Delight ink. And what I'm going to do here is place a stamp pad underneath just for support. I'm going to stamp this up nicely. Give that a nice push. And then I'm going to come back, stamp it again. And then I'm going to take a Granny Apple Green marker and just on the words wishing, happiest, and birthdays, I'm going to gently color the bottom of each word. So what I'm in effect doing is giving it a little bit of an ombre effect. So I chose this as my very first YouTube public video because it's bright and cheery and I really liked it. So let's push that down. I like the stamp set. I like the big words. And there you go. There's that ombre type effect. So we're done with that. Okay, we'll put that on the side. And then the next thing we want to do, we're done with the Stamparatus. So the next thing we want to do is take our stamp pad and just to protect the stamp pad, I'm going to stamp the flower image from Bloom and Grow and we're going to use Smoky Slate and the reason why I need this paper behind here not only to protect the pad but because I need to stamp off I want this to be very light so I'm stamping off and then I'm going to stamp onto this scrap let me move that up so you can see and push pretty hard Okay, and it's much lighter than the original, as you can see there. Okay, and the next thing we want to do is stamp the sentiment for the box as well. So we'll just do that here, and then we can die cut both at the same time. So the first thing I'm going to do is take Granny Apple Green and stamp it once. And then I'm going to clean the stamp set off with my chamois. And this is just a very stained chamois. And the next thing we want to do is stamp it again in Daffodil Delight, which is already open. And then I'll show you what we'll be doing there. You know, I'm thinking that I might want to stamp that in actually mango. Let's try mango. Uh, mango Melody. I'm going to try Mango Melody. 
it's a little less it's not really orange but it's not yellow either so I want to just see how that looks okay we'll decide later then the next thing we want to do while we're stamping I have a four by five and a quarter inch insert so I'm going to flip that over that's going to go inside the card and I'm going to once again take smoky slate and I'm going to have a piece going across here so I do want to bring this up here to stamp off very gently and we'll just bring that about there okay and then I want to do the same with the envelope okay because while we're coloring you may as well just get everything colored at one time so we have the envelope we have the flower and we have the insert so we will start coloring that very quickly I'll show you what to do there so the first thing I'm going to do with the flower is take a mango melody marker and color in the buds all the buds are done and then we're going to take granny apple green and we'll do the dark granny apple green blend and just highlight the veins of the leaves. And then we're going to take the light granny apple green and blend, oh, we want the brush side, and blend the dark in with the light. And we'll also do, on the buds, we'll also do the stems, give those a little bit of color, and color those very gently with this same light granny apple green. Now we can go do the stems of the leaves and the buds very gently. I'm barely even touching it. Okay, now we'll take some cinnamon cider um, and color the center of this flower. I guess that would be called the stamen of the flower. And then we want to take the Daffodil Delights will take dark and highlight some areas. Now, my dark has been used quite a bit, my dark Daffodil Delight, so I'm just very gently in a circular motion, kind of, there's no rhyme or reason here because my marker, I just ordered new ones is worn the tip is worn so it really doesn't matter at this point on this card and now I'm taking the light and I'm blending that in it's very basic coloring you don't need any kind of coloring skills and honestly, you don't even need to stay in the lines if you don't want to, but I mean, it's going to get cut out. Okay. All right, let's move that aside and let's use some dark mango, mango melody on the smaller buds. And then we'll use some dark Daffodil Delight on the larger flowers. And then we'll take the marker, Granny Apple Green marker, and highlight the stems. And do the same on the envelope.
Okay, so those are done now. Now I'm going to bring over my die cutting machine. Okay, now I'm taking the Budding Blooms dies and this would be the die that, nope, not this one, that's too big. The die that I need. Now I've already cut the flowers here and I've already cut the scallops that we're going to need just to save some time. So let's cut this flower. And then we also want to take a rectangle die and I've already put a post-it note around the two sizes that we actually need for this card. So we're going to cut out the one first that says love to celebrate in granny apple green. Love to celebrate you. And we need one more post-it note to hold that down. I'm just putting these to the side so I don't really lose them. And now I can put this one away. And I can put this away. I don't put them away right away, I'll lose them. And we need that as well. And then we can put this aside. Now I'm going to change the plate. I'm going to take my four inch, four and a quarter by 11 inch. This is the way it needs to go. Okay. Sideways to fit in here. And then we'll take the special plate that we have for this particular cut type of folder. And we will do that embossing and we have one other thing to emboss and that is going to be for the card box. And for the card box top and for the insert we need a little strip as well. Using this rectangle shape and I want to make sure the words are up on top because we need to decorate the bottom and that looks pretty centered to me so that's okay for me and I will run this through. A tip I have is to run your square or rectangle dies uh, on its side, sideways. It makes for a smooth run through the big shot. Now we can take this away. Alrighty. This is the envelope. This is the insert. So why don't we just do the insert real quick. All right, so we have that little one inch piece by four and we'll adhere that. And here I like to take my silicone mat and place it underneath anything that I'm gluing because I tend to move it off the paper and I don't want to get it on my work surface. And then we'll take some linen thread and I'm going to wrap, put some adhesive right behind there. That would be where I'm going to start wrapping my linen thread around a couple of times. That's one time, I think twice would do it. And that's two. All right. I'll adjust that in a moment. And then I like to take a piece of scotch tape on, on each side just to secure those ends. We'll put that on the inside. Okay. 
This gives it a little something something, right? And then I'll cut another piece and we'll put a little bow here. There we go. Cut that a bit. That was a bit of a sloppy cut. Try that again. Okay, better. There, that's the inside. Now we'll work with the outside. Put that over there. We're going to take our sentiment and adhere the flowers. So you saw me create one flower, but off screen I created another and that was just to save some time. So this is the one I did with you and this is the one I created off screen. So the first thing we need to do is take the scalloped piece it would be this piece that we need to take. Yes, and I need to cut this down a little bit. And then I need to take about a quarter of an inch off of this as well, off the bottom. So that would be first. Now I'm going to take some liquid glue and put a little strip right at the bottom here so I can secure the scallop piece. Okay, just like that and I'll hold it down for a moment because now we just have to cut off the edge, the overlap. Okay, okay. All right, and now we're going to take some ribbon. And this is the Bumblebee Gingham ribbon. And we're going to wrap that around. So that there is a little bit left over at the edge that we can work with. So now we'll cut that off. Okay, so that's about where we want it. And there's a little bit hanging off the edge. I'm gonna flip it over and put some adhesive down right there. And there we go. And then I'm going to take a glue dot. My take your pick tool and right here place that glue dot so I can secure this side right there. Okay. Next will be to take some linen thread and the polka dot tool, just a small piece and we're going to wrap some linen thread around. And also, that's why I have this little piece of gingham. I'm going to take that and put that there as well. So I put the, I'm actually gonna take the gingham first and then lay down the tool and then take a nice piece of linen thread. I basically just want to wrap these pieces of ribbon around the pieces that are just kind of sticking out. Okay, there. Okay, I'm going to knot it. And then tie my bow. And leave that just as it is at the moment. 
I don't want to mess with it until it's already on the card. Okay. Now put some adhesive at the bottom, at the top, and this is when we're going to put our flowers right there and right there. Peeking out. You're just peeking out. Okay. Now we'll put some dimensionals behind there. I'm sorry that took so long. It didn't need to take that long. So I'm going to put lots of dimensionals on here. I'm going to really hold it down. I just really want it to be very secure. I'm a crazy dimensional person anyway. I have a drawer full of dimensionals. There's the card. Almost done. Almost, almost. Now I can play with the ribbon a little bit. And clean it up. And that's just fine. Okay, now I had mentioned earlier that I cut, I die cut some flowers already, and so we'll need three. And we'll need some liquid glue. I'm going to put one right here, right here, and one down here. So those will take a second to dry, and in the meantime, we'll get some pearls. Oh, they're right here. And we'll add some pearls to the flowers. We'll use that again so the card is done. I hope you like that. And now we're going to move on to the box. First thing we'll do with the box is decorate the top. So I think I want to I think I want to use the mango melody. So I'm cutting out the word celebrate. And if I don't like it, we can cut out the Daffodil Delight. And then I'm going to take some of my dimensionals. Now I cut some of this to make it thinner earlier on another project. So it would fit perfectly on top of that small piece that small word and we're going to take that word and we're going to place it right on top of celebrate and that's in granny apple green okay and then the next thing we're going to do is take another scallop edge that I have already pre-cut and we'll put some liquid glue right behind here And we only want a small portion of that to show. And we'll hold that down so then I can cut off the excess. Then we want to get some dimensionals here. and center that on the box. And we'll take those other three flowers 
and put those down. And then we'll go back to the pearls. We do need to do the ribbon on here. And then we'll take a couple of glue dots to secure the ribbon. We'll secure the ribbon right there. And then we'll take the tool again and just cut off a piece and the linen thread. And I'm going to tie a knot around that. Okay. Tie a knot and then a bow. So now I'm going to take another glue dot put it on that ribbon and then tie my butt linen bow like that. And bring over our box and the scoring tool. Okay, so the box is five by five. I'll have the measurements uh, will be below. So I'm going to take five post-it notes. I'm going to stick that up against here. Okay, good thing I had the spare one. That way it, it there's a little bit of a gap so that way this box top will close nicely on top of the box top base. I'm glad I realized that. Okay, so five by five scored at one inch all around, and now this is six and a half. You can take the shim away, and this is six and a half by six and a half, and it's scored at one and three quarters all around. And the measurement of this final box when it is complete is three by three by one and three quarters deep. Okay, so now we can take our bone folder and burnish. Our score lines. So we're cutting the squares and then cutting on an angle. And then cutting the squares, all four corners, and then an angle. Same here, all four corners. Just makes the box easier to close. We'll do the same on the top. Okay. 
Now we can take the tear and tape. And then here we're just going to go diagonally. Now this is where I take my take your pick tool and start pulling the protective cover. Now we'll just put the box together. So we fold in those squares. Now we're going to take some glue, liquid glue. And just put that right on top. sit for a minute and then we'll work on the box bottom. you enjoyed my very first YouTube video. Thank you for watching. Give me a thumbs up. Thank you. Bye-bye.